Hello again, it's April here. Welcome to another studio vlog. I completely forgot to do an intro this week, so this is April from the Future saying hi. Uh, we had a long weekend this week, so I think we start the week with a bike ride. It goes a little wrong. I've got this fancy computer for mine for his birthday, and it does everything. Maps, calories, delivers a baby, heights, you know, everything. So we got a little map. And we're gonna follow it. Right? Hopefully. I haven't been on a bike in about five months and I'm scared. We've gone about how many miles have we gone? I think you did really well with that gate actually. I like this path, it's one of my favourite paths. So cute. I'm walking up the hill. It's very hilly. Martin's doing a good job though. I almost uh, died going down a hill, so this is quite nice actually, relaxing. <laughs> So we've been back from our bike ride now for a couple of hours, had some lunch, watched some telly. It was equal parts terrifying, exhausting and sunny. So that's kind of how I was feeling the entire bike ride. My idea of a fun bike ride would be like a slow plod along a flat canal, take some selfies and then sit with a coke and watch the ducks. Martin's idea of a fun bike ride is like a roller coaster of doom. He found the steepest, scariest hills in that place, I swear. But it's fine, I survived. And I think we're gonna try and go maybe like once a week just so I can build some confidence up on the bike because I get a little bit scared of like roots, stones, twigs, dirt. <laughs> I'm just joking. Definitely the roots though, the roots are scary. Roots and downhills. But um, yeah, I'm probably not going to uh, vlog much today. That was just a like a little hello. Because I'm going to be working on stuff for videos today. I have another day off today. It's Monday. Uh, I have to get back to work tomorrow. So today I'm going to try and do some stuff for videos for this week and in the future. Just try and get like on top of it. So I won't film any of that stuff because otherwise it won't be a surprise. But if this is your first video that you're watching, welcome to the vlog. I promise it's not about biking. I just... Uh, I literally, that was the first time I've been biking in about four months. So it is about art, I promise. Stick around and I will show you some art. But for now, I'm gonna say goodbye and I'll probably pop back tomorrow sometime. So yeah, bye. It's Tuesday evening, just finished work. Uh, the printer is going, cause I gotta print out some like little monkey thank you cards, but it's been having some issues cause it's attached to my work computer. Sometimes it does this thing where it's like, the printer's not responding and you have to restart the print spooler but I can't do that on my work computer because I don't have permission to do anything and I can't be able to change my computers over so I have to keep restarting the computer every time it says that it's very annoying but I have uh, three orders that I'm trying to get ready to take to the post box tonight So I got these guys all ready to go and just had a delivery, surprise delivery from delivery person Millie's in the UK, it's like a cookie shop and I guess they have these freshly baked cookies so there's 24 two boxes of 24 cookies and I had a little note on it to say like thanks I guess for being awesome and I think everyone in my business unit at work got one because it didn't have a name it was just like thanks for being part of the team the only problem is well a how do they expect me to eat 48 cookies before they go stale actually I take that back, I could easily do that. But uh, the problem is they have like milk and egg in them and so I won't be eating them and neither will Martin because uh, we don't we don't eat that stuff. So I've messaged like this WhatsApp group that I'm in from my running friends, like running people, and hopefully someone will come pick them up. If not, I'll ask the neighbors, but between you and me, I don't really like the neighbors. I don't like food going to waste. So hopefully they find a good home and a good stomach to rest in. 
It's very messy in here. Ignore it. Ignore it. Don't look. Wow, that printed completely white. Like, no colour. I'm actually printing on different paper, so it looks a bit weird. Printing it on thicker paper. So these are the ones that I printed. They come in one big sheet and then I have to, like, hand cut them. But I'm actually going to redesign this at the weekend. I'm going to redesign a proper card, like a proper postcard with stuff on it. You know, because I want to. So, Martin's cooking dinner tonight. I'm very excited. He actually, he has a, a speciality. Well, it's like the only thing he cooks, risotto. He can cook other things, but his risotto is really good. And I'm not about to stand over a stove and stir rice for 40 minutes. So I just let him do it because he likes it. <laughs> um, but so yeah, what I was saying was, I really want to design these cards. Like, obviously this isn't a card. It's just literally a piece of paper with a monkey on it. It's totally cool. Monkeys are awesome. Paper's awesome. But I really want to have like a little card that has a pretty cool design on it. And then on the back it says, you know, like, hey, thanks for buying from my shop. Um, tag me on Instagram. You know, all that kind of stuff. So, I think I'm going to design that at the weekend. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to send it off to get postcards made. Probably should. But I'm not sure if I'll do that or if I'll try and like hack it at home just to save a bit of money. Good news everyone. I found two takers for my two boxes of cookies. They're both from my running club and they came and picked them up after dinner. They both asked me if I'd been running. I told them no, I hadn't. I don't actually remember how to run. I know I go something like left, right, left, right. But that's like as far as I remember. So that was the big news of the night. The cookies have now gone. Um, I'm going to be watching some YouTube. I'm watching, I'm watching Lily and ZST. Lily Nizd, if you guys know her. She's got like a little shop and she's got a YouTube channel. She has quite a good YouTube channel if you like that kind of thing. I know you do because you watch this one. And she's from New Zealand so I like watching her because I'm like, oh, New Zealand vibes. So, yeah, I'm going to watch her vlog and do some sketching, but I won't, um, yeah, I'm going to do my 100 day project, so I might show a little bit of it. I don't know if you guys are getting bored of seeing me paint birds and stuff and plants and things, but I'll just show you a little bit anyway, just in case. You can always skip it, can't you? So I'm drawing this bird from Instagram. I don't know what type of bird it is. Maybe it's a gatuflis. Or maybe this is Gatoofless on Twitter, I don't know. But it's pretty. I love the colours. When I'm looking for the, the um, images, and normally I literally just go to birds. Like, I mean, yeah, I'm just in birds right now. And I just go through the list and I just, things just jump out at you, you know. And I just love this colour combination. Look at it, it's so beautiful. So I'm going to do this one. And what I wanted to show you before I got distracted was my sketch. Because I did rub it out. Um, you can see maybe faintly in the background. I've erased it and I've redrawn it three times because I have this terrible, well, it's not terrible, but I have this um, thing where I will draw it, like I'll draw the body too big and then I get to the tail and I have to cut it off. So even now I think the tail should be a little bit longer. See? But I'm not going to draw it a fourth time. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just trying to get a little bit better. I think the main problem is I pre-cut all the pages. So I basically have restricted myself to this square or whatever it is. And I don't think you, you should do that. So if you guys want to do like a challenge like this or even a little series, um, I definitely think don't restrict yourself to a pre-made like a pre -made size. Just because it's, it's it has made things very awkward for me. So that's all I'm saying on this. I'm going to keep drawing. I'm still watching Lily NZST. She is now talking about how to sell your art online. I can, I'm going to take all the tips I can get for that. It's um, Tuesday? Wednesday? I think it's Wednesday. It's almost the end of the day, almost 5.30 and I've just been doing cricket stuff in the background for the last like half an hour just while I finish off some work stuff but I keep having one sec I have to hide my work stuff um I keep having this bleeding thing pop up because my this is my printers out of paper and it's not out of paper I think the rollers are the rollers are dirty 
so I've tried cleaning it and I don't think it cleaned it properly. I said it did, but I don't think it did. Sorry, this is like such an interesting view. <laughs> yeah, you see here has made the sticker paper dirty, so. <sighs> Let's do another bloody clean, shall I? And my sticker mat has gotten to the point now where it's not sticky anymore. <laughs> um, I've been sellotaping it to the top, but it, it tore this one, so I'm going to cut these out by hand. I've got a lot of freebies from the last hour because I've just literally I've just been messing up. Like, every single paper has messed up. Look at all of these plant stickers and elephants and guinea pig stickers that I have that are, like, um freebies and they're I mean I don't think I'll even give these as a freebie to be honest because that's just annoying probably just chuck these, these ones away but um they're the good ones yeah like this one here this elephant got caught up so I'll throw that one away and let's see some of these cut really well but I had the depth on too high because I've been using new sticker paper so I'm trying to get the depth right and it like made it jaggedy here. Can you see how jaggedy it is on the edges? So I don't want to include those because um, I did a test and I took, I thought it was just the paper but it's actually the sticker paper as well. So it's very jaggedy. But if you get these in, I mean if they're freebies I think it's fine because it's free and if people want to use them they can use them. If not, you know, don't worry about it. But I don't want to sell inferior stuff because I don't think that's fair. Looks like I got my printer finally working after about four different print roll cleanings. Um, I've almost finished printing out these plant ones. I'm just restocking the plant ones. But they are spread over six pages. Someone thought that was a good idea. <laughs> so I've got to print six pages of them and that gives me eight sticker packs. But it's, um, it's a bit annoying having to print six pages all the time. I should have just done it like one or two sticker packs per page but april of the past did not think that way so now i'm gonna sellotape this bad boy on all right i'll just let that do its thing so it's about six o'clock now sun's gonna go down at nine and it's very cloudy so it's already dark in here like the light's already going down i want to film a video um after dinner uh, right now I'm cooking dinner in the other room in the kitchen. We're gonna have a uh, vegetable curry tonight, so that'll be nice. Literally, potatoes and carrots and peas with curry sauce. <laughs> because I, I'm not, I'm not even doing onion. Cannot be bothered. Can't be bothered. Just curry sauce and some vegetables and poppadoms. It's gonna be good though. If you put enough mango chutney on anything, it's good. Am I right? I know Katnip always says that. Copyrighted, I don't think she copyrighted it, but I always feel really weird saying stuff that other people say a lot, so just forget I said that. Okay. Did you come up with my own catchphrase? That's bananas! Monkey themed. Anyway, um, so I want to, yeah, film a video tonight for tomorrow. Probably should have done this yesterday, but I kind of forgot what day it was because I started like a day late this week. Um, I was going to do my goals video, like a mid-year goals video, but I looked at my goals video from the beginning of the year and I had two goals. One was to make stuff and one was to paint with acrylic wash. And I'm making stuff and I'm painting with acrylic wash, so the video would have been really boring. I would have just been like, yeah, doing it. <laughs> End of video. So, um, it's good that I'm doing it though. I'm happy about that. But my goals haven't changed and they're not going to change till the end of the year. I still want to make stuff and still want to paint with acrylic wash and get better. So instead, I thought it might be fun to do a little Q&A video. Talking too much, sometimes I get a little bit out of breath because I forget to uh, take a deep, take a, take a breath, I forget to breathe in. So, just breathe in, breathe, breathe And I love watching Q&A videos and finding out more about people that I watch and that I uh, enjoy their art and stuff. So I thought it's always been fun to make a Q&A video, but I've never done it because I didn't think I'd get any questions. I got a lot of questions. I think mainly because people were, they felt a little bit sorry for me because I posted this joke about my mum. Uh, FYI, my mum still hasn't asked me a question. Basically, I'm going to try and film it tonight and edit it and get it up tomorrow. Um, but I'll, try, I'll get it done. I'll get it done. Always get it done. I'm just a bit worried about the sun going down. So I might have to get some artificial lighting up in this chisel. Anyway, my arm's getting really sore and I've got to go stir the rice or something. I don't know what you do with rice. You shouldn't actually stir rice, guys. You should pop the lid on and you should let it bubble up 
and you don't stir it until all the water's evaporated quick tip from me to you but I always stir it every few minutes because I'm always worried it's gonna burn anyway gotta go just um, taking a break from filming for my video for tomorrow I'm actually gonna do the rest tomorrow morning because I'm really tired and it's getting really dark in here and I just I just don't want to sit at my desk um, I'm just uncomfy but I thought I'd show you this quickly. This is the Strathmore Mixed Media Sketchbook. It's the new one I got for my birthday. And I just basically did a whole bunch of tests with different mediums. So like black paint, uh, Copic markers, other markers, um, pencils and stuff. This here is ink. Look how nice it looks. And then watercolour, it does look like, I don't know if you can see that. But it does look like if you use a lot of water, it kind of uh, pills the surface. And then this is gouache. Oops, still wet. But, um, yeah. So, n the only thing that bleeds through is the Copic markers, which is to be expected. But it's really nice. It feels so nice to draw on with pencil. So, I'm really looking forward to drawing on this. I'm going to actually have a break now. Let this dry. And I'm going to come back tomorrow and draw in the first page for my video. Because it'll be like, a bit lighter and I'll have a bit more energy. But now, I'm going to go do my favourite thing this week that I've been doing. So I just uh, stamped all of these envelopes. I think there's probably like 25, 30 left. These envelopes I just send to like UK if they just have stickers in. They are a bit flimsy. So I've been writing, please do not bend on them. Um, and when these are all gone, I'm, I'm not going to get these again. I want to get ones that are like this big for stickers just in the UK or maybe even internationally because the board back ones are quite... They're quite uh, pricey and I have been going through them. So yeah, got my little dinosaurs on there. Just gonna let that dr like dry a little bit. And what I'm actually gonna do is use my stamps again. Cause I just don't really feel like drawing right now. Like, it's so hot. I've got the fan on, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's just so hot, I just can't be bothered to draw. Um, but I thought I would do something fun. So I got all these stamps that I made a few weeks ago when I did like that day when I was just doing art all day and I haven't used them much since but I thought it would be fun to try and stamp some uh, tissue paper to see if I can get the tissue paper a little bit more exciting. Don't know if it's going to work so we're just going to give it a go. Just a couple of sheets, see how it works out. Okay, I just got one sheet of watercolour paper here. Oh, it's already it's already got wet from my desk. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work out. I mean, watercolour... Uh, tissue paper is so skinny so okay i was thinking gouache or acrylic would be best for this but i don't want to waste my gouache so i'm going to try using ink first i gonna i've got these i thought that would be a nice little combo we'll just see how it goes i mean if i waste it it's just a sheet you know i might do a couple but look i mean any single drop of water is just like soaking it up this is probably a stupid idea let's just see if it works so i just literally put a little bit on and Let's do rainbows. I do not know if this is gonna work, guys. Experimentation. I feel it's gonna be too wet. Yes. 
that is too wet in my head it is a it's a brilliant idea all right let's just dot maybe just dots will work if you guys have ever done this i mean you probably haven't because honestly this is kind of dumb i just wanted my tissue paper to be pretty without having to pay <laughs> pay for it because this is expensive i was looking at that no issue uh, that everyone uses and it looks really cool but at the same time it's very expensive unless you have like a massive shop and you're getting lots of money i don't, I don't know if it's worth it right let's try experiment number two this is gonna be i'll just use some acrylic wash just a couple of colors Ta -da! look that actually works a little bit although i can see you going through a lot of paint doing this if you had some cheap acrylic paint it would be a bit better so posca pens i think the only thing you can probably do is dots or lines i mean posca pens should be able to write on anything right that's pretty cool wow that is just fantastic i mean sign me up for any wrap and paper or textile designs because i would mop the floor with the other contestants that is stunning can you imagine that on like your wallpaper or something oh i think i might have to change my career you know become like a textile designer yep oh, that is beautiful i forgot i actually do have acrylic paints i have the paper artsy paints and they're really lovely and thick this could work kinda i guess i mean it's not watery at all i think we have a winner this is pretty good isn't it i mean it's a bit messy but it's handmade so i just finished uh doing like little test packages of the the uh, tissue paper i made so i had the the acrylic paint one which i think probably works worked out the best and then i had the posca pen and the uh, acrylic gouache one which was a bit faint but i think the colors are nice and then this one here is the ecoline ink just splots so i don't know i personally now that they're packaged i think they look really messy it was a fun experiment but but yeah let me know what you thought about doing this i don't really think it's a viable option but it'd be interesting to get your thoughts anyway you record audio all of a sudden and then your girl was like what the heck and then it, there were just lots of issues i finally got it exported but other than to upload it my gosh but now this is a new camera angle i'm like perching down so i'm not standing too high so it's quite good for my calves the oven's beeping hold that thought so i'm just having a quick lunch and then i'm meeting my friend meeting my friend in a little town called farnham which is not far from here it's like 20 minutes away and they have an art shop there and i think we're just going to go to the art shop and go for a walk uh i've met her about three times during like lockdown just uh when like lockdown was starting to get a little bit more relaxed like yeah you can see your friends now so she's the only other person i've seen apart from martin for like six months it's been pretty awesome such an introvert's paradise so yeah we're gonna go there i might just show you like the art supplies because i know everyone loves seeing art supplies and i really want to pick up some new brushes from my acrylic wash and a new sketchbook so i have like a whole bunch of brushes obviously some of them are nice some of them are cheap really been enjoying using this angled brush but it's for watercolor and most of my brushes are for watercolor so and they're like you know big fat ones and i kind of want to get some more chisel ones or flat ones or angled ones but for acrylic gouache acrylic gouache so i think i need to look for acrylic uh brushes ones that like don't hold that much water so that's what i'm gonna look for and probably get a starbucks maybe um and go for a walk so yeah be nice but i'm just waiting for the oven to beep again so i can have lunch i'm pretty hungry it's a lovely day outside it's really bloody hot though i don't like it i want it to rain
So it's Saturday night now. It's Saturday night at my art desk. Who knows what pictures we'll paint. <laughs> Does anyone know that song? I've been busy all day, guys. Not really doing much, but just, you know, chilling. Got some sexy new brushes. Look at these, they're like fake wood brushes. Ooh. They're Pro Art Acrylics with an X instead of how it's meant to be spelled with a C. Uh, I don't know, that kind of annoys me. But I asked the guy and I said, I'm looking for some acrylic gouache brushes that I can use with acrylic gouache. And he said, acrylics? And I said, no, acrylic gouache. And he said, acrylic, acrylics and gouache. <laughs> he didn't know what I was talking about. But um, I have heard that you should, well, I don't know where I heard it from, <laughs> who knows. But I think that it might be good to try some acrylic brushes instead of watercolour brushes with the acrylic wash. But I'll see how these go. They weren't ridiculously about overpriced. They were like maybe five, five pound. I think the most expensive one was maybe seven pound, like this one or this one. I did want to buy some expensive brushes, not because I want to be like, oh, look at me, I'm so cool with my expensive art supplies. But just because I brought really cheap ones in the past and they never work. And then I got this new ruler. Ooh, exciting. But actually, I really need a new ruler. And it's got, like, this rubber on, which mine's ha mine fell off from my last ruler. So it, like, s slips everywhere. So this would be really good if I have to cut my zines in the future or anything like that. So, look. It stays quite safe. And lastly, I got the sketchbook. I don't need a new sketchbook, honestly. I've got so many sketchbooks. But... I just had to buy a new sketchbook. Can't go into an art shop and come out without a new sketchbook. And this is one that I haven't tried before. I'm coming to the end of my other cheap one from Ryman. I think that was only about four or five pound. This one was cheap too, it was only about seven pound. It's uh, by Talons, who I've never tried before. It's called Art Creation. So I think it may be one of their like budget or student ones. But it feels quite nice. So the cover feels really nice and it's some lovely yellow. And then it's got 80 pages, and the pages are quite thin, 90 pounds. So yeah, 140 gm squared. I don't know, I don't know sketchbook words, but it's, it's thin. And apparently it's good for watercolor. It very, feels very much like, um, I don't know, mol moleskin maybe? It's very smooth. So yeah, just give it a go. I wanted like another rough sketchbook for when my um, Ryman one runs out, so. Yeah, Talons. Let me know if you've tried this one, it's art creation. I put a thing on Instagram to ask about birds, to see if anyone had any bird ideas. So I've got a whole list of birds here. So probably what I'm gonna do is go on Pinterest for a little bit and just uh, look up some references for these birds and pick my next one to draw, cause it's time to paint a bird. Hello, it's Sunday now and I'm just uh, painting a bird and I thought, well, I'm painting it I could also answer some questions. So I'm actually doing this as a voiceover after, but I thought I could answer some questions that I missed from my Q&A video. So I hope that's okay. I hope it's not boring uh, listening to more questions being answered, but I think there's only a few. I don't know if I mentioned this, but someone asked how I put paintings and drawings and make stickers from them. So I'm thinking of doing a video in there in a couple of weeks. So look out for that one. I have mentioned it before how I do stickers. It's in my vlogs and things like that. I think I even have a sticker video, which I'll pop somewhere on the screen. Um, but yeah, I might do another one, like an updated one. Okay, so Taylor asks, do I like to read? I do like to read. I haven't actually read a proper book, like an actual physical book this year. I've been listening to audiobooks, but a couple of years ago, I really wanted to get back into reading, so I set myself up like a reading challenge to see how many books I could read, and I think I read 54 books that year, or 53. It was like more than one a week, it was like one point something a week, and that was really cool, but then literally the year after, I didn't read anything, and... I do love reading, and it's not that I don't have time because I could do it at night time before I go to bed, it's just get into the library because I'm not going to buy books because if, you if you're reading like a book a week, that's a lot of books to buy. I do have a lot of art books and stuff I want to be reading at the moment, so I should probably crack into those, but right now I'm still working my way through an audiobook series, so I've still got like four books in that one to go. Taylor also asks, are you a self-taught illustrator? So, um, I didn't study illustration in school, I didn't study art after high school, but I did go into a creative career, so I did, I actually have, 
I went to uni a lot, guys, and then I had breaks in between because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with my life. I still don't know what I want to do with my life. Um, I did graphic design, hated it, but that got me into Photoshop and Illustrator. And then I took a break, came back, and then I did digital media, which was like a mix, mix between 3D website, um, film. It was like literally everything you can think of mixed together. And that kind of got me on the 3D path. And I took another break for a few more years, came back and did my master's, which is in 3D. So I'm not... Um, so yeah, I didn't go to school for illustration, but I did do a lot of art in high school. I did a painting, design, graphic design, illustration, where we actually learn about illustration. And then also, when I was a really young kid, my mum got me private art lessons, like at the weekends, that I did with my friend, and that was really fun. So I've had some practice, I've, I've had some tutoring, but most of it is just kind of drawing by myself, and probably some taken from my digital art slash 3D background. A few people mentioned pets and they said they like the plants in my videos and Beryl but um if do I have a pet and if not what would I choose so we don't have any pets right now we live in a flat I did mention in my Q&A we want a dog and a cat so we really want to get a carvapoo which is mixed between a cavalier king charles and a poodle and that's because Martin's allergic to dogs so we're looking for hyper allergenic dogs and they're just super cute I really wanted a labradoodle but it might be a little bit too big and then we really want to get a cat, a Russian blue, or a blue Russian? No, it's a Russian blue. And we're going to call it blue, because that's how imaginative I am. <laughs> and we're going to call our dog Rubix. Slader R asks, what has been your favourite subject to paint for the 100 day challenge? I would probably say, um, probably the um, fruits and veg, because that was when the challenge first started and that's when I think you're most excited about something. So sitting down every day to, play, to paint um, fruits and veg was quite fun and my style kind of progressed quite fast because I never really just painted without using pencil, like pencil line to do the outline. So I think my style kind of um, it, like improved quite fast just because I was like learning and doing it and now over the last couple of months when I've been doing like plants and birds and stuff I think I'm kind of gradually trying to refine where I want to go with painting, so yeah. Fruits and veg. Andyopolis asks, I, I just thought of another one. She asked me literally seven questions. Thanks, Andy. What's something weird about you? Um, weird. Why do you quite like lots of weird food combinations that other people think are strange? Like, I like putting jam in my pasta sauce. And I like... Cream cheese and marmite, like sandwiches, it's pretty good. I don't really know, I mean, I guess I'm just a bit of a strange person in general. Lots of people kind of think I'm a bit, like my sense of humour is a bit strange, like if they meet me in real life and I, I make jokes and lots of people just don't get the jokes I make and they, because I'm so deadpan and I just say it with straight face and people just generally think I'm a bit weird. Also socially, like, in, not in parties or like dinners or whatever, if you're going to see friends, but if I just go to the supermarket and, or like the shop, and I'm talking to the person who's, you know, ringing up your items, I always just try and make stupid jokes and they always just look at me like I'm dumb. And I do get a little bit awkward sometimes in social situations. Yeah. Bit weird, bit weird all around, really. Kitty is not amused, says, hi, I hope you're doing well. I am, thank you. Do you have a go-to method for getting through art block? I think art block's kind of a funny one. I'm not really sure if I have ever had art block. I don't really know what what it is. I think it's probably different for everyone. I definitely have moment uh, days and weeks where I don't want to draw. I think sometimes that's just from being tired. Uh, I've never really had a, a time where I don't know what to draw. Like I always have ideas, but sometimes I have too many and I can't f pick from one. So I just think I'm not gonna do anything. Like I just get overwhelmed with how much I want to do. I don't know if that's art block, but uh, generally when I feel like I don't want to draw or I don't feel motivated, I just don't draw. And I'll play a game or I'll watch some telly or I'll, you know, play a board game or whatever. And I'll just chill out for a few days until I feel like it. Because, you know, what they say, the heart grows fonder with distance. Is that what they say? I don't know. That's probably not really, really correctly quoting that. But when you start to miss something that's when i think you get to the good a good stage when you're like yes i want to get back to art so maybe just take a break i don't know kitty is not amused also asks where do you get the most inspiration to create seeing museums art videos etc 
even though I live like 40 minutes from London by train, I never go there. Uh, I would like to go more, it's just such a hassle just to go there and it's so busy there and I always feel so dirty and gross after being in London but they do have a lot of lovely museums there and I love visiting museums but I think if I was to go I would probably have to go by myself because I always feel like if I'm with someone I need to rush through because they're bored. I don't know if they are but that's kind of how I feel. So I wouldn't say I get um, inspiration from museums but I probably get inspiration most from seeing other people's work. You have to be in the right mind frame, I think, to get inspiration from other people's work, like either videos or illustrations in books or children's books or on Instagram. Because if you're in like a bad mind frame and you're, you're not like enjoying your art, you're, maybe you don't feel like painting, maybe you feel, maybe you've been too busy to paint and you're having a bit of a break. I think sometimes other people's art can really make you uh, depressed and a little bit annoyed and like, you don't like anything you do but then other times if you're just thinking take inspiration from other people's art and you're in a good place with your art i think looking at other people's art is awesome and it is inspiring i have studio vlogs where they are like opening patreons or they're making new products i find really motivating to produce more stuff and then also i think i take a lot of inspiration just from photos and reference and i like ideas that i get for example when i did my bird thing literally yesterday when people gave me a whole bunch of different birds one of them was seagull and i thought i would love to draw a seagull so i started going through seagulls on pinterest and i had so many ideas to paint like seagulls in different like funny ways um, and I thought, wait a minute, I could just do this as a little series, maybe like a sticker pack or something, or maybe just like a sketchbook spread, and that made me really inspired. So, yeah, I think just looking at nature and the world around you, architecture, things like that, just inspire me. I'm sorry that that wasn't helpful. <laughs> Literally, I'm just saying I look at the world and it makes me happy. Colour palettes also are another thing that I find super inspiring. If you go online and you see... I like a colour palette, like someone's put their colour palette up or they've brought new paints and they go together really well. That always inspires me. I'm always like, oh my god, that colour palette's amazing. I don't know what happened to my voice there, but yeah. Elenaki? I never know if it's Elenaki or Elenake, but I always say Elenaki in my head. Please correct me if that's wrong. Um, she asks, what's your most favourite and least favourite thing to draw? I'd say my most favourite thing right now would be animals. I love drawing animals. It's like super fun for me. I just, I just love them. Um, my least favourite thing to draw would, I think I mentioned this in my Q&A, is anything that you draw on for the first time because it always feels really awkward and you don't know what you're doing and it comes out a little bit like bad until you practice. So, yeah. New things. Patricia asks, what do you like to do outside of art? So I really love playing games. Uh, I love playing games with Martin, like two-player games, exploration games like Minecraft or Stardew Valley or uh, Seven Days to Die, which is kind of like a zombie version of Minecraft. Although Minecraft does have zombies in, but this is like more realistic. Anything where you have to build and collect stuff and fight monsters. I did used to run a lot, so outside of like last year, I think I probably ran more than I painted or drew, cause just because I was training for so many runs. Uh, I I can't really say that <laughs> that running is really a, a, an interest anymore. I just kind of got out of it. But I do love going for walks. So I try to go for a walk every day. And I love going, exploring new areas. Like go, I love nature, forests, rivers, lakes, all that good stuff. I wish that I lived somewhere more mountainous. Because I think I could definitely get into hiking. That would be really fun. And I love cooking. So I really love make, uh, trying new recipes, making things up, baking. And of course, eating it all at the end. Thin Mahmoodi asks, which country would you like to visit first when it's safe to travel internationally again? So funny story, not really funny, but I bought plane tickets for my mum and her partner to visit us during Easter. And then coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever, hit. And Flybee, who they were flying with, got went bust. So they weren't flying. So literally the next day, I bought them tickets again on British Airways. National and international, all the flights stopped. So I got refunded on my plane tickets. So we have two plane tickets that we can basically use. And I think Martin and I are planning to when everything, like maybe next year, Easter or, you know, sometime around there, if it's safe to travel, we want to go to Tenerife. 
because I've been there separately. I lived there for five months. Martin went there separately with his friends, but I think it'd be really fun to go together and explore it again. I have been there for maybe seven years and I love Tenerife. It is like one of my most favorite places to go. So yeah, Tenerife is where we're gonna go, which is in Spain. Luna Spix, Luna Spix asks, are you open to collaborating with small beginner artists? If so, what would it take to be able to collaborate with you? So I've, I've been asked this a couple of times on Instagram as well, and I've only collaborated twice with two people. One was Liz, and one was Connie from Connie Violet Art. And I've, I, I knew Connie for about a year, maybe, no, I knew her for at least two years, because it took a year just to uh, plan the collab. And I, I've known Liz for maybe three years now. So, um, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't keep track of the time. Yeah, so I knew them, I knew their art, I talked to them regularly, and I thought that our art would go well together, and I thought we, we would work well together. So in those two instances, I was really excited to collab with both of them. And I have explained on Instagram before when people have asked me that I think doing a collab with someone you should like you should feel that way. You should feel like you know their art, like you would work well with them, that you would create something really fun together and that you would enjoy the process. So I find it I would find it a bit weird just kind of collabing with someone if they just ask me out of the blue and I say, Oh yeah, let's do it. Like to me that wouldn't feel really awkward. So I hope that that makes sense and it doesn't come off too harsh let me know what you guys think of co like collabing <laughs> is it collabing collaborating with people if if you've ever done it just with like uh, a someone that you've just met like literally they just messaged you or you just messaged them and how that worked out because for me i just would find that really awkward and then luna spix also asks what are your tips for artists feeling detached from their art i'm not really sure what you mean by detached like are you just not enjoying it or do you look at your art and you think I didn't make that or maybe like I understand sometimes if you look at your art and you think it's good and then you'll come back and a few days later your eye has improved and you look at your art and you think what well, I didn't make that <laughs> maybe that's how you feel um, or maybe you just aren't enjoying it so it could be any of those things I guess I don't know maybe you need to take a break and do something else and kind of fire yourself up again like if you're not enjoying it I just don't think you should push yourself honestly I don't push myself to do things that I don't enjoy maybe that's a bad policy to have in life maybe you should push yourself to do things you don't enjoy but I just I think life's too too short if you're not enjoying it just don't do it and if you do want to get better and push yourself then just keep going and know that you will improve with time like it does take time to improve. You're not just gonna get better at doing anything overnight. And maybe try new mediums, try new subjects. Um, I find trying new mediums really helps for me. Getting a new art supply and trying it, even if I don't like it, it's still exciting to try it. So otherwise, super glue. That would definitely attach you back to your artwork. <laughs> I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm really like, I'm not good at these super deep questions because deep, I don't think about deep stuff much. I'm quite shallow. I hope I helped a little bit. And then a nice little one to finish it off. Uh, Neftali Albert asks, for your studio vlog, what's your favorite dog breed? I do have a few favorite dog breeds. In my life, we've had quite a lot of dogs because my, my parents always had dogs. I think you can never go wrong with a retriever or a Labrador because they are probably the friendliest, most lovable dogs out there. I also would love to have a pug, but Martin is really allergic and I heard they're really bad. And German Shepherds, my dad has, has always had long-haired German Shepherds and they're absolutely beautiful. And really any cute, scruffy little dog. In New Zealand, our first dog that we had, he was just like a mix of I don't know how many dogs he was like a collie with a I don't know terrier and he was just like a little mutt but he was the most gorgeous most loveliest dog so yeah <laughs> didn't really answer your question there but I love all the dogs that was my little q and um, I probably won't do another one for a few months so don't worry <laughs> not going to be any more answers to any more questions for a while and i ended up painting the painted bunting which was a suggestion on instagram lovely bird uh, i didn't quite get the the red right because i don't really have the right red and i couldn't quite get that look purple at the bottom right yeah it was nice i tried a different technique this time so i tried like blocking out the colors first 
worked quite well. Again, I think the tail is cut off. I really need to work on the tails. So I hope that you enjoyed that and it is lunch time now, so I'm gonna go grab some lunch. Today, this weekend, I also said I was gonna do a thank you card and I kind of forgot about it until I looked in my bullet journal and it told me to do a thank you card. So I've gathered all the ones that I could find that I have saved. So I have this one from Bye Bun and it's literally just some paper with some studs on and it just says thanks for your order. This one is, I think, maybe catnips, one of her older ones. Honestly, this is too much writing for me. Like, I don't think I've ever read this before. <laughs> so I don't, th I don't think I want to have that much writing on. And I have two from Frannard. They are both double-sided. Thank you so much for your purchase. And then she's got her, like, address and Twitter stuff. This one's from Harriet Julia and it's just a, like, a postcard. And then on the back it says, thank you, your support means the world. And then there's, like, a little handwritten note, which is quite nice. And this one's from Emma Carpenter. This is one of her recent designs from her plant stickers. And on the back it says, thank you. And then, like, it's a little, you, like, fill it in. Yeah, that's a cute one. This is kind of what I was thinking of doing an image on the front and text on the back. Maybe. But I don't know, maybe I just want to have something on the front. I do also like a handwritten note too, I think that's quite nice. So I was thinking what I normally do when I'm stuck for an idea, like I can't really think of anything in particular, so I thought I'd have a look through my old sketchbooks, like my most recent sketchbooks and see if there's anything. People have really been loving the birds that I've been doing, like I think everyone just loves birds, like they're universally loved. So I also think of doing something with birds. But I really love these fat little birds, so I was thinking maybe you're doing just some like little cartoony birds like this little fat ones on branches or on a wire or something so i spent about half an hour doing some little thumbnails and some little pictures of birds i kind of took this one i took this one as inspiration because it's my favorite one i've done and i i think it's it's probably a lot of people's favorites because it's so cute and little like squishy so i took that one as an inspiration i just did little like circle birds and i kind of tried to change the shape up a little bit and then i thought about what would i what i could do for a thank you card so i have the traditional birds in a wire which i like as an idea but i also think it's been done a lot so yeah i'm not really sure this is kind of what i got so far i think the next step is take it into procreate and mock it up a little bit better maybe draw the birds because i kind of know what i want those to look like or i don't know maybe just mock it up a little bit um the only thing is i'm not very good at like writing in procreate so i'm not like a word like you know those people that can do like words and stuff like arty i'm not i'm not really good at that so we'll just take it into procreate and see what we come up with so i sketched out a couple of ideas i've got this one here which is like birds on a wire and then I have this one which just says like thanks for your order i don't like either of them i just don't think they're really like me and they're a bit like done before i don't know they're not very it's not very exciting so what i'm thinking is uh, i'm gonna have to keep working on it this week and i won't have anything done this weekend which i know i said i was gonna do in this vlog but oh well that's the creative process i guess Sometimes things just don't work out. While I do love this little bird, I don't think it translates very well to like cartoons. Yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think this is boring? I don't know. I'll just keep um I'll just keep drawing this week and see what I come up with. So hopefully next week we'll have something. So that was it for the studio vlog this week. Uh I actually really wasn't productive this weekend at all. I just kind of chilled out a lot. I didn't really get much done but that's fine. I think I'm gonna try and do that thank you card this week. So uh, in the next studio vlog, we'll probably look at that in more detail. That's it. So I hope that you enjoyed that and I will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.